Welcome back to Game Room Theater, guys. Uh, this video is actually highly anticipated from a lot of my followers on Instagram and TikTok that I've been waiting for these updates, and the updates are on the other side of the room, so let's get on right over there. And here it is, guys. As I've said before, I was gonna post a video on my YouTube channel with a full-blown DIY video on how to set up these automations uh, to be able to get a uh, scoreboard like this and with some scrolling ticker information as well. But the elephant in the room is obviously this, this Minitron. This is the final version of the Minitron. Uh, the prototype is now down. And this is from the good folks at uh, minijumbotron.com. So guys, on their uh, website, so, so basically, um, they've been inspired by my game room with all the crazy lighting. I, I, I like all the RGB stuff. It is what it is. And uh, they've made this gorgeous, gorgeous Minitron where you can change up all app controlled. You can change up the colors of this. If you don't want the gimmicks happening on the top, you can make that solid or turn it off. Same thing with what this is. This is the, uh, what they call the ring of honor. You can put uh, more writing and things on this uh, that, that are basically transparent. Uh, same goes for here and here. Uh, I'm actually gonna go back to the mini Jumbotron website and order some Toronto Maple Leafs logos and things that are gonna go across. Right now it's already red because I was watching a Raptors game earlier. It's done for the sake of copyright. I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not actually not broadcasting it there. Uh, but uh, anyway, on mini Jumbotron's website, you can actually enter in and, uh, and design your logos and they'll, they'll, uh, they'll print them and send it to you and you can stick them on. And, and if I was watching the Leafs, their primary colors are blue. Very easy to change up the blue. There's pot lights down here as well. And uh, like, like I said, guys, this, this worked out really, really well. One recommendation I have before I get into any of the DIY video uh, explaining this, guys, uh, it's gonna be a lot of detail and perhaps fairly boring for a lot of people. But uh, for those that uh, are really wanna, wanna be able to watch some live stats, you know, sitting, feeling exactly like it did, um, if you're at an NHL or NBA game, you know, you're watching the game and then you look up, there's live stats that are updating and what just happened and statistics or betting odds or whatever you're into can show up there. And the key is guys, uh, keeping it simple and automating it because if you don't automate it, you're not going to use it. Trust me. Uh, it'll look cool. You'll be impressed the first time, the second time, the third time you're not going to be bothered. So, and uh, what you'll end up doing is nothing wrong with it, but you'll probably just broadcast the game on this, which I can do as well. I've got to, so I'll show you guys what I'm running inside of this when I explain in more more detail. Uh, but uh, anyway, from minijumbotron.com, uh, guys, there's a discount code. Uh, game room theater gets you five percent off. They've got anything on the website, so um, they've got bigger versions as well. Do check that out. So as I've mentioned earlier. Uh, you can you can turn these lights off if you find them a bit much like I really really like this look right now um, uh, And what I'm trying to do next guys is trying to build some automations to work with this I've, I've done this previously where for example, there's an NHL goal. My goalie light goes off it, tr it was triggering fog uh, uh, a fog machine and then it was it was causing these gobo lights to go flash for about five ten seconds and then and then shut down so I want to do the same thing here when there's a goal, I want it to be able to link, and I haven't done this yet, but my intention is to do this in the next couple of weeks, is to link up these lights lighting up and then otherwise being a solid red if the Raptors are playing, like, you know, their primary colors, right? So um, that's what I'm gonna work out uh, next. I was thinking of putting gobos on this, you know, just like a real Jumbotron, you know, with lights kind of following a trace uh, pattern uh, or firing as well when there's a goal, but I'm like, okay. This is already enough. I'm doing too much. So anyway, I've calmed down with that. And then, uh, like I said, this scrolling feed, it's very, very reminiscent. You guys are probably like deja vu. If so, where have you seen this before? Um, up there, that's where you've seen it before. Uh, and, and you guys can check out that video as well if you wanted to build your own uh, little ticker. So anyway, coming back to this. Um, so, so guys, that, that one of the other suggestions I have is if you are going to do a Minitron, um, 
highly recommend if you're gonna stick it where I am. Most of the people that do these mini jumbotrons, nothing wrong with it, so please don't judge me when I say it. They stick it over their pool table and they're broadcasting the game on it. So uh, to me, it, you know, a real purpose of a jumbotron is having live stats not, uh, and uh, having the option of watching games on it as well. Like, you know, say there's a, there's a major game on, but there's some other secondary game that you would, you care for and you can put it on this. But for me, a main purpose is to have some live stats and, and create that feeling of being in the stadium. Let me just turn all the lights on so you guys can get a better look at this thing um, in all its glory. And like I said, it's a very, very polished look and um, it's just an am amazing wow factor. You know, you come down those stairs and your eyes hit this thing. Like, you know, some of my friends that have come over in the last week, because I've only had it up uh, for about a week, and uh, they're, they're literally like, this, this takes my breath away. <laughs> so, I mean, they, they were kind of saying that about the, the entire space anyway, but this is what really sets it apart, guys. Because, uh, uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm actually putting this in my main seating area. And like I said, not just stuck over a pool table uh, to hang out. Nothing wrong with that if that's the space that you've got. But give this a thought, guys. Uh, look at this. This is like a stadium. That's why those seats are there. I often get these comments as well. You know, uh, hey, these guys are going to get a neck, uh, neck issue. Uh, you're gonna, they're going to have to face 45 degrees. No. This is the view, guys. Very, very comfortably. I'm barely at uh, 30 degrees, maybe. And yet, I can still turn and talk to the rest of my family and friends that may be over hanging out in the room. So it's still very, very comfortable. So next guys, I uh, just wanted to review the website and any gotchas and things to watch for if you're on the fence trying to decide, uh, hey, I'm gonna, do, I, do I want this for my room? I know a lot of people will want this and some of you guys may have some sticker shock of how much uh, this costs and what's included and what's not included. So let me talk about some of that uh, as well. Um, so here's a comparison of all the mini Jumbotron models. Obviously the most cost effective one is the Scoretron that's a 24 inch model. Uh, costs a little less than 1500 bucks. And keep in mind guys, 5% discount if you put in Game Room Theater at checkout. Um, so the, ne uh, th the next one that I, that, I mean this is the one that I've got, the Minitron 24 inch. This has got all the bells and whistle whistles, all the excitement, that ring of honor with all the lighting effects that are going on. Um, if you want uh, the fanciest one, this is this is it. But if a 24 inch uh, screen version works for you, but if you have the room for it and you have the ceiling height for it, you know, uh, then uh, you go for the Macrotron, Macrotron uh, 32 inch. Depending on how far you're going to be from this, you're broadcasting games on it. You know, for my purpose, the 24 inch, just uh, sitting about uh, you know less than five feet from it and, and about you know six feet down. Uh, it's uh, it's perfectly readable as a scoreboard, so I'm and I'm perfectly happy with it. You may have this over your pool table, and uh, you may just be broadcasting games on it. Then the this is this the 24 inch is absolutely fine. But if you've got a much bigger space and you're gonna be seeing this from a distance, then they go all the way up to the Megatron. But uh, the cost is gonna be just under four thousand bucks. And uh, so the other thing that's not included, guys, is of course the. Uh, cost of the graphics. You know, when they're when you're on their website, they will they will help you um, design whatever you want. So it's fully customizable. Go go check it out on their on their website. Uh, but getting back to the comparison, um, uh, you know, graphics. You know, budget in anywhere from $110 to about $200, and then um, budget for another, let's just say, around $400 for screens. I mean, you can find $100 screens no problem in this day and age. These aren't expensive items. So for example, if I was just to take the Scoretron and you want to get four screens in, you want to get your graphics in, you know, about, uh, uh, let's just say about 21 to 2200 bucks, you can have this uh, done. One thing to watch for, guys, is uh, ceiling height. You know, anything that's 24 inch, about seven and a half feet, the Minitron eight feet, because it's got the ring of honor. Uh, just be mindful when you're deciding. Um, if you have less than this, it, you can still get it to work, 
It's just that uh, I, I would highly recommend putting like a coffee table or something that blocks access from somebody's head having to approach from underneath this, even if somebody's backing into it, uh, which could be very dangerous. And also keep in mind, these things weigh a lot uh, with the TVs, you know, it's about 100 pounds. So you, you've got to make sure that you've got the proper bracing in the ceiling. M most times you're just going to go into your joist and, uh, and it comes with all the mounting hardware anyway. So these are some of the things to watch for guys. A couple of main things, yeah, the TVs aren't included and the cost of graphics, just too much warranty things and things that uh, uh, can go wrong from that perspective. It just, uh, you know, it's, be it's better that you just purchase on your own. There's several recommendations on the website of which size screens uh, work. And if you're in doubt, the folks at Mini Jumbotron are extremely helpful. Um, they, they will tell you if something, if you find an alternate screen and uh, you know something's on sale, is it gonna work or not? You can run it by them, they answer very quickly and, uh, and you can go. Okay, I'm gonna have this in the description of the video, all the links and everything that you need. So let's uh, just jump right in to some of the technical aspects, the very boring aspects, but trust me, it ends up being rewarding and it's not gonna be as bad as you think. So first and foremost, you need that tiny PC that I was showing you guys. So what I highly recommend is the Geekom one. Let me open this link. So here you go. I mean, nothing special. You don't need anything particularly fast. This one goes on sale quite often for like 129 bucks or so. So do check it out on their site. Uh, but any equivalent cheap tiny PC, even ones that you may be able to find used that, is, that have an HDMI port out, and um, at least, at the very least, has an SSD and has a uh, BIOS capability to allow you to start um, when there's power. So you're gonna put this on a smart plug so you don't have to uh, mess with having to press a button to turn things on. So getting back to this, um, the next thing you need is a one to four HDMI duplicator. And I've got one open here. So, you know, this duplicator is basically one by four HDMI splitter. So one input in uh, out to four monitors. And that's what's going on. I mean, you've got a Jumbotron, right? You've got four screens to output the same video on. So that is uh, what this is gonna be. I mean, there's, there's one that, uh, that's input and then the rest are outputs. Uh, the one input is obviously gonna come from your tiny PC now the next item on the list is fairly optional. I mean, if you want to be able to use your Minitron or Mini Jumbotron um, with any other cable box that you might have inside there or any other source of video, say you just want to watch a bunch of other games on this thing and be able to switch from your, your tiny PC. So this is what I recommend. Uh, anything that is an HDMI switch, three to one will work. I mean, three will obviously, self-explanatory, will allow you to add two more devices beyond just the PC itself. So, very simple, uh, not very expensive either, as you can see. Okay, so now let's get into some of the software that you need. Uh, the first one on my list, Flying RSS Feed. That is an RSS feed and this is highly optional and it's really just for optics. Uh, for me personally, I mean, you can get some, some news information, but you, you basically have like a ticker. So I just hit uh, flying RSS and it opened up. Um, as you can see, some sports news is scrolling by. Let me just go into settings and you, and it's very, very easy to configure. I mean, I have it on this particular size. You can change it to 120. Um, I downloaded a particular font to make it look like an actual ticker. Um, you can do that and uh, and Google how to do that. It's very simple to do, and then you can add that particular font. And I wanted that uh, ticker look. So anyway, it'll remember the position. So I always have it at the bottom, and you just basically open, uh, right click and open to save settings. So to add RSS feeds. You know, just Google for whatever feed that you want. I've got a Sportsnet feed. You can get an ESPN feed, whatever you want, or news feed. Doesn't really matter. You just put the link in here, and um, you can put up to ten or more 
um, uh, links, uh, actually up to 10 it looks like, uh, 10 different uh, feeds and then, and then just hit uh, save settings and that's it. Uh, you'll have a scrolling bar at the bottom that mimics the look of a scrolling ticker. So next, let me just close this down. Uh, obviously you need a Chrome browser. Um, this one, number three, I'm not going to go into. It's a download and configured and LED display. This is really for other custom messaging and things like that that you want. Chrome Remote Desktop, you can install on the tiny PC itself and then use that to uh, open it up on your phone to uh, manipulate and pick games and things like that. And if you didn't want to do that, if you're in front of the Minitron or Mini, uh, the jump, Mini Jumbotron, then you can also use Unified Remote. There's an app for uh, Apple and, and Android, but then on the PC side, the tiny PC side, you just set it up as a server. Just go to their website and download it again. I'll have a link uh, in the description uh, step by step here. Now guys, this is the really important part. If you're not going to automate any of this stuff, trust me, it looks cool to use perhaps once, twice, three times. You've impressed, a, impressed yourself, you impressed a few buddies, but that's it. If you're not going to automate it so that it's open and ready for you to pick a game, you're not going to use it that often. So let's talk about the next few things. Uh, auto hide taskbar, self-explanatory. You're trying to make this entire thing look like it's not a, not a PC or a web page. Because oftentimes when people see my videos on Instagram, that's what they're assuming that uh, uh, this guy's got some serious programming or some serious program encoding running. But no, it's uh, Windows 10. You can obviously do this with other uh, Raspberry Pi and then whatever else you want, but guess what? These PCs have gotten cheap. They're super cheap to run, and they're super easy to manage and do all these kinds of updates without having to know any kind of serious uh, computer science uh, type of background to, to make things happen. Anyway, just automation-wise, auto-hide taskbar. Super simple. Just going to go to taskbar settings and uh, just let this open up scroll down to taskbar behaviors and automatically hide uh, taskbar so all you're going to do is click this and guess what it, it starts to disappear okay now let's uh, just talk about the browser itself and some tweaks and things that i recommend on the espn page so that whenever it opens it, uh, it, it, it actually remembers your favorite teams. So all you gotta do is just create a free login to the ESPN webpage. You only have to do this once unless you forcefully log yourself out. So then you get back in here. So I've favorited some of my teams that I care about. The reason why you wanna do that is because then they show up uh, very early on across the top, as you can see here. Uh, you know, these guys just, uh, uh, just played a short while ago and that's why they're they're coming up with their with their last score but um, this is how you're gonna pick your games and I'll get I'll get into how you can control all of this from a distance sitting on your couch um, and you don't even have to be in front of your t uh, your uh, your jumbo trying to do it so let's just find a live game so here's a live game are you are you gonna do is with your phone uh, just click on box score and as simple as that a web page opens up but as you'll notice, as you scroll, the top uh, starts disappearing. This is fine on my desktop capture right now, but if you're sitting 10 or 15 feet away, this is not very good. So uh, what I recommend, and it's gonna, your browser is going to re remember this, uh, switch anywhere from 200% uh, zoom to about 250% zoom. As you can see how big it got. Uh, let's just leave it at 200% uh, for this uh, uh, for, for this exercise anyway. So, you know, Gamecast, um, you can see, you just scroll a little bit past that and you park it on this. I mean, you don't have to keep touching this unless the game's over and uh, it's just going to stay fixated on that, on that one score. Or you want to see some more specifics, then you can leave it on that. Game leaders, you can leave it on this and it will be constantly updating. Um, there's other stats that you can see, as you can see, play-by-play, -play, team stats, uh, box scores. But all this will be updating in real time or as close to real time uh, as you can get. And, uh, and also, like, you, you, you know, once, you're, once you create your free account, um, you can actually pick all the teams that, or, or the leagues that you care for. So, you know. 
Okay, for the next step, we're, we want to open up Chrome by default whenever you turn your PC on in kiosk mode. Kiosk mode is basically full screen mode. It hides all of the bars and things like that so that you can't really tell it's a Windows uh, device. And then secondly, it's not as easy to get out of accidentally. Uh, if you do ever need to get out of kiosk mode of your browser, then you all you simply do is press uh, Alt F4. Uh, if I'm speaking too quickly and you want to see more steps, then um, I've got a link in the description of this video as well, which is this right here. So uh, what you're doing next is you're looking for your Chrome, Google Chrome shortcut. So I've got it under Program Data, Microsoft, Windows, Start Menu, and Programs. All you've got to do is just right click on that shortcut, go to Properties, and go under Target, and you see where all of this is. I mean, this is pre-existing. Uh, what I added was everything that's uh, basically highlighted uh, highlighted here um, the dash dash kiosk onwards and then uh, uh, I've added the specific web page that I want to open in kiosk mode so let me hold it here for a second as you can see this is what you want to get entered in and then you hit apply and then okay so let's just test if it opens in kiosk mode let me double click here and there you go absolute full step number four auto start apps on Windows launch so all you've got to do is pr find your Windows key and press uh, press uh, R here and you're gonna type in shell colon startup and hit OK so once you do that you open up under start menu programs uh, startup and that Google Chrome um, shortcut that we had found all, you, all you're gonna do is just copy it and paste it there so which I've already done you can copy you can hit copy this way as well copy here and paste it here so now when you restart your PC it'll open up this Google Chrome in kiosk mode uh, okay so you're not completely done uh, yet one big step that you've got to get done is auto login for Windows 10 the reason why you're doing this again, guys, uh, if you're reaching for a keyboard and mouse to plug into this, you'll, you'll never use it. So that's why, I mean, there's a slight security risk, you know, put it on a VLAN, put it, uh, basically isolate this, uh, this device if you, if you wish, if you're worried about security. But um, uh, you want to enable auto login just for the sake of convenience. And uh, auto login is very simple to do. I'm listing the steps here. I won't show you guys. You're simply just going to do the same thing. Uh, Windows R, and you're going to run uh, NETPLWIZ, um, and then um, basically just follow the steps in the link in this description in this video step by step. Next step, step number six here. Check BIOS to ensure PC comes on when there's power. Uh, so what's meant by this is in before you even launch Windows There's typically a setting and some of these tiny PCs have it enabled sometimes they don't um, And it really depends on the manufacturer of the the PC that you're using But almost all of them that I've come across especially built in the last 10 years uh, have an option that if the power plug is pulled and um, There's some, there's power now that to for, for that device to turn back on so the reason why this is important is because they have SSDs in them. So it's not like the, the old days you have to do a graceful shutdown. Uh, you're just going to put a smart plug on it. And I've named my smart, my smart plug uh, Jumbotron. So when I say turn the Jumbotron on, the, the smart plug turns on, which means that now it's receiving power. And then that automatically launches the PC. I don't have to go and press some button. Be in, inside the Jumbotron and take out a screen or any of that. So, you know, my particular machine is, is the Geekom that's inside the Jumbotron. And here are some of the, here are some of the steps of this particular one. Uh, they even have it in their frequently asked uh, questions. How do I set up BIOS to automatically power on when there's a power failure? Press delete uh, to enter the BIOS setup interface when you first turn it on um, before it's even reached the windows. And you select chipset, and you know as you can see on the, on the screen various different steps again it'll vary uh, PC to PC but uh, you'll you'll have to Google this on your own on uh, 
now that you've got everything set up, uh, how do you control all of this? So let's just say you're, you don't want to be in the room. You just said remotely, sitting upstairs or wherever you are, turn the Jumbotron on. It's on. Um, how do you control it when you're not there? One simple way, I mean, you can uh, uh, RDP in or you can use a Chrome remote desktop just as easy. Uh, you got to set it up on your phone as well, Android or Apple, just get download Chrome remote desktop uh, so that you can remotely control it. Uh, but it's got to be running on your, your tiny PC uh, as well. Um, once again, follow the link in the description of this video. So I've got it all set up, uh, clicked on Jumbotron and uh, let's see what the Jumbotron is currently displaying. It's displaying the, the Lakers game and it's got uh, my flying uh, uh, RSS feed. Let me see here. Yeah, flying RSS ticker that's automatically running. So keep in mind, guys, uh, this is you've got to place that shortcut as well, the shortcut to that application so that Windows starts it up in that bottom position. Um, I didn't actually put it in here and I didn't show you guys. Uh, but you know, it's, it's exactly the same as the uh, Google Chrome that we've put under startup in this particular folder, the shortcut, and that's how it uh, opened up. Let's close that back up. But uh, let, let's just say you wanna pick another game. Um, and let, let, let's go to perhaps another game that may be on. There's, it's late at night here, not many other things going on. Uh, I'm just gonna scroll Scroll, okay, you got uh, NHL going on as well. It's March Madness, but uh, I don't know if anyone's playing now. Uh, but yeah, here's another game. So the, the other thing that you guys wanna uh, uh, really watch for is, um, say you're in front of it, you wanna put some really quick inputs. And you do that by following the next steps here. So guys, uh, here's the alternate way. I just talked about Chrome Remote Desktop. You've got it running as a server and you, you've got the app on your phone. The other app to get is Unified Remote. Um, Unified Remote is, is a little different in the sense that, say you're in front of this thing and you no longer want to see the Boston-Portland game. You literally use this as a mouse. I don't know if you guys can see the mouse, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm actually moving it on the screen here and the mouse is moving as you can see in the top corner there. So um, let's just say, you know, I wanna go back to the Lakers game or choose any other game. Let's, for some sake of simplicity, simplicity, I'll just choose the Lakers game. As you can see, the Lakers game is, uh, is now displaying. Um, box scores is the default. Uh, I always like seeing the game cast um, and y you have other stats as well showing up, you know, play by play, you know, what's going on as you can see it's scrolling. And I'm simply just moving my hand across this to control it. Um, very, very simple to use. Unified remote, once again, you're gonna, you're gonna install the Windows app. It automatically will, will run um, every time you turn your PC on. And then on your phone, you've got, uh, you just basically got to add your server and it'll automatically search for it. A unified remote app, either be it on your Apple or your uh, Android will automatically search for it. And there you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, uh, please do DM me, follow me on Instagram uh, and ask any specific questions that you may have. Most importantly guys, just don't forget I have a 5% discount for everything on the Mini Jumbotron website. Just simply use my name, Game Room Theater, uh, as you can see on the logo there as well, and uh, you get your 5% off. Um, they've got several different sizes and um, see what might work. You know, you, you need to worry about ceiling height a little bit, so you know, the 24 inch. If you've got eight foot ceilings like I do, this, this works out perfectly fine. Um, if you've got uh, less than that, just make sure that you've got something, once again, that's going to block the way so that nobody walks into this thing. So anyway, guys, uh, make sure you subscribe. I'm going to have some videos on these fun little devices as well that are completely automated uh, very, very soon. Hit the subscribe button, like this video, and uh, check out my Instagram as well. Take care, guys.